I'm Karen Greer in the CBS 46 Content Center, and this is one of the stories from our CBS 46 archive. You know, we wondered, what were people doing July 27th, 1996? You remember the date, the Summer Olympic Games, Centennial Olympic Games, right here in Atlanta. Everyone excited, overjoyed that Atlanta was hosting its first Olympic Games. But July 27th, everything changed. A bombing shocked the core of the city, the nation. We talked to some people in the newsroom to see what they remember from that day. The, the city was crazy. I mean, there, there was a lot, just a feeling of uh, just attention that was on there that I had never felt before in Atlanta. That was a day that you remember hearing about and seeing, and the thing that sticks with me the most is the victim, the woman who was killed. And I just continue to see her face, her, her image. Excitement in the air as people were here celebrating in Centennial Olympic Park, a band playing, and then the bombing erupted, the silence that was really the peace of that night. The lone security guard who was in the area noticed a backpack there, Richard Jewell. He was being credited immediately with saving so many lives, but later he was considered to be the main suspect. There was so much media scrutiny around him, and unfortunately, it was days after, months after, that when you heard Olympic Park bombing, that's who you associated with. And in your mind, it was automatically that he was guilty because that's the only person you saw. And that's the name you, you heard associated with it. The rescuer, the man who had, worn, had gotten people out of harm's way, he became the suspect. And unfortunately, he was he was not a suspect. They found the real bomber, Eric Robert Rudolph, later on. And I, I you know, you think back to what uh, he went through, what Richard Jewell went through, and you got to feel just terrible about it. In our archives, we were able to dig up some of the footage from that day, July 27, 1996. I happened to be working here at WGNX at the time, and uh, I really got chills as I watched this video over again. We want you to take a look. We don't know exactly how this is going to impact the competitions themselves. I imagine they will go on, but it's hard to say. It's going to be very hard for people to get around under these circumstances because they have cordoned off uh, downtown. So seriously, you're seeing pictures now, uh, obviously, that are uh, very soon after this thing happened. The place where we say it wasn't uh, as full as, uh, as it had been. As you can see, there were a considerable amount, a number of people downtown uh, at the time that this thing happened and um, all of them down here to enjoy themselves, to have a good time, and, and then this happened. Um, it could have been worse in terms of the amount of people that were around it, but it's plenty bad enough with, uh, with the reports that we're hearing. There have been some very, very serious injuries. Uh, this was, um, I don't know the magnitude of the device, but it went off with a bang and a loud, uh, large orange flash that uh, Shelley has been telling us about, and um, just a very bad situation down here right now, which they're dealing with. Obviously, they had a plan that went into effect here, and they have put that into effect. And right, right now, you have a ghost town. And again, this slightly macabre spectacle of Centennial Park all lit up for a party. And yet, all of these people, um, uh, all, no people in it except for security forces because of this, uh, this very dastardly deed that's uh, taken place here tonight uh, just a couple of hours ago. Lee, if your photographer, Keith Williams, can uh, give, her, give us a picture, and if you could explain to us, show us if you can, where the athletes are staying in proximity to where this happened this evening. Do better than that, I can actually probably show you. The athletes are staying over, if people go over to the aquatic center, that's the general area where the athletes are staying. So it's not very far away at all. The aquatic center is across town there. It's, uh, I think, what Keith has in his shot. Yeah, you're seeing the aquatic center. Kind of the area in front of that, if you will, and off to the right of it is where the athletes are billeted. Now, as Keith comes back across uh, the town here, he will come back and he'll show you just how very close Centennial Park is to all of that. That, of course, as you know, is one of the features of these Olympics is that all of the venues are, um, or 70 percent of the venues are in this very contained area, what they call the Olympic Circle in downtown Atlanta. And Centennial Park has become the very heart of, uh, of the Olympic Circle, the place where uh, people with or without tickets simply wanting to come down and see what was going on, the place where just plain folks uh, gathered. and. Uh, uh, that's one of the things that's inexplicable about activities like this. This is, a, this is an act against defenseless, defenseless people uh, simply out to have a good time. Uh, very, very difficult to understand all that, Karen. Thank you, Lee. We've got some, latest, some of the latest wire copy right now. Security guard said that uh, 
he was moved back. He'd moved back, actually, quite a few people because he'd gotten word that a suspicious package was found. Uh, the cameramen, some of the people that were by that soundstage, were moved back about 50 feet. And about five minutes later, they said they saw a large flash and bang. It didn't seem that large of a bomb because the package was not that big, but pieces were flying everywhere. That's from an eyewitness. Now, Gary McConnell, director of the State Olympic Law Enforcement Command, is telling us that uh, authorities are investigating the possibility of a pipe bomb. Police and Mayor Bill Campbell have confirmed at least one fatality. A morgue attendant said he was told that four people were killed. And several witnesses reported seeing dead bodies. Now, the explosion rocked buildings, shattering windows. Right now we're looking at uh, some home video on CNN. It was taken shortly after the explosion happened downtown tonight. It could be heard throughout the downtown area where tens of thousands of people have been gathering every night since July 19th when the Olympics began. Now we've been trying to give you live team coverage both from CBS and CNN. We have crews around the area looking again once again at these live pictures from or actually these pictures from CNN from earlier about 1:30 this morning when this all took place. Now Denise Agent is over at Grady Hospital where about 31 people have been taken with injuries. 11 with minor injuries have been taken over to Piedmont Hospital and 48 people have been taken to Georgia Baptist Hospital. Once again, uh, it's an explosive device is what we know now, but we understand Olympic law enforcement officials are looking at it as a pipe bomb. Now, Lee, what has been, have you heard, has the media been given any word when you were in uh, briefings on what was going to happen, what things they were looking at, if there were any types of terrorist activities to go on at these Olympic Games? Uh, they, we didn't get that at the briefing. If I can just not answer your question here, we're seeing some uh, vehicles now leaving Centennial Park, and that's, uh, that's what you're seeing. Just ahead of those vehicles went a couple of uh, ambulances uh, very, very, very slowly, um, which uh, that may be vehicles uh, taking out. I, I don't know what. It would be speculation at this, at this point, but they were ambulances that were driving out slowly and not in a hurry, so uh, I'm not quite sure what that means at this point. Um, I'm sorry, I was trying to observe that, Karen, and uh, didn't get the full, uh, the full intent of your question. What were you asking? That's fine, Lee. I know you've got quite a lot going on around you there over Centennial Park. Just trying to get an idea of, uh, in the plan uh, with international media people, if in the plan ACOG had given you any idea, given you guys any word on what kinds of things to expect if, in fact, terrorist activities took place at these Olympic Games. None whatsoever, Karen, in their briefings. They were. Uh, security being security they tend to not tell us uh, a, a great deal about it except that they have it uh, and that they um, uh, and that, that they're confident that it's in place and those sorts of things in terms of actual threats that they had received no word whatsoever but that is a ma that is a matter of not of them not being forthcoming but a matter of policy they routinely do not share that information unless they feel that the public safety is directly threatened uh, and they apparently had no such feeling uh, leading up to this uh, they may have known more about this uh, than they told us. I'm certain that is uh, the case in terms of threats at any rate, but they routinely do not share those threats with us uh, as a matter of security policy. In the evening, that there was a possibility that some things might be closed down tomorrow because of another device. Have you heard anything to that nature? Uh, I cannot tell you exactly what's going on with that, but what you're looking at now is a picture of uh, a, the back end of a bomb disposal truck from one of the area agencies. Uh, that's about, uh, we've swung around now, I would say that's about four or five blocks away from Centennial Park, but they are moving some uh, equipment in here. Uh, that may tend to sort of uh, confirm somewhat what you're saying. Uh, certainly the activity that they're taking now is one of cordoning off the area, of sanitizing the area, if you will, of making sure that there are no members of the general public or the media or anybody else for that matter in the park that don't need to be there. Uh, whether that indicates that they're still looking for another device or they're simply trying to uh, uh, affect the best uh, investigation they can, I don't know. But uh, again, they, there are sort of bomb removal devices, devices still in the, uh, um, in the area uh, ready to go. And we understand, we know we've got quite a few military personnel in town and had heard that there might be a possibility that uh, we could be uh, involved in a state of emergency at this point. Has any word of that been told to you yet? Well, we are definitely in a state of emergency down here already. Nobody has to tell you that. Uh, you have a, essentially a martial law situation with uh, soldiers, with police officers, with every level of law enforcement and, uh, and national security involved down here um, telling us where we can go and where we can't. So it's essentially a martial law situation here. 
Uh, as to the declaration of an official state of an emergency, I don't know, but an unofficial state of emergency exists right here, right now. Do you know at this point if the president is still in town, Lee? I don't. I don't think that he is, but I wouldn't swear to that. I thought the vice president was supposed to be around for some of the events uh, yesterday. I thought he was meant to be at uh, Coe and Whitewater, but I'm sorry, I don't have that information. Okay, thank you very much, Lee Green, live tonight over Centennial Olympic Park. And once again, we have an eyewitness who was at the scene when this all occurred about 1.15 this morning. Tanya Dunham, thank you very much for sticking with us throughout this. Tell us uh, once again just the scene when you were out there, the feeling, uh, what was going on? Uh, actually, the, the park itself was real nice. The, the concert was real nice. Uh, when I w stepped around the corner, next thing you know, it was just a big boom. And this boom. is your home video we're looking right, at now. Right. This is actually when I was running from behind the park and running at that point to the, the police officers and military personnel were directing everybody to get out of the park and leave. What were people telling you as far as what was going on? Well, one of the uh, young fellows that I was running with uh, told me that he actually saw the whole thing. And uh, next thing you know, it was a big boom. And a couple people, uh, a young lady was uh, actually dead. He said he thought she was dead. And a couple people were on the side bleeding. Having been in the middle of this, what would you say was response time to seeing all of the emergency vehicles out there? Oh, it was pretty quick. I say about five minutes, ten minutes after everything had happened, everything was, it was, everybody was in place. So. And people moving you out, Everybody's, police officers. Right, right. Okay. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Tanya. We're going to check back in right now with Denise Agent, who is over at Grady Hospital, where quite a few people have been taken, 31. Uh, Denise, can you tell us the situation right now? The situation is rather calm right now, Karen. 31 people have been brought here. One confirmed fatality. That person was brought in under full arrest. The injuries, we are told, range from very minor to very serious. They are injuries consistent with a bomb blast, shrapnel-type injuries. People were injured uh, severely in their abdominal area. Two people are in surgery at this hour. We don't know the extent of their injuries, but they have been in surgery for quite some time. Grady Hospital has the best trauma unit in the southeast. That is why the bulk of the people who were more seriously injured were brought here. They started coming in about 10 minutes after the bomb blast down in Centennial Park, and it's slow to a trickle. Right now, we are watching family members come in, but of course, as we told you earlier, they are still in the dark, not getting very much information because right now they're trying to care for the people inside, and they don't have time to get identity, so quite naturally, the family members are worried. They are rather upset, and that's what we're dealing with at this point, 31 people have been brought to Grady. People have been taken to Georgia Baptist Hospital, Piedmont Hospital, and we are told some of the injured were taken to Crawford Long. We Tell you what we've got, what we know right now. We've uh, seen probably about 31 patients that we are getting the process of evaluating. Uh, we've had two of them in the operating room right now, and uh, they're both stable. They're being uh, taken care of up there. We've had one fatality that came in. Uh, early on and the other patients right now seem to be relatively stable we're in the process of evaluating and getting them uh, uh, assessed dr anderson what's the nature of the injuries of the two who are on the operating room uh they seem to be general abdominal truncal type injuries both are both are stable right now and being uh and being uh dealt with by our surgeons upstairs and the injuries to the fatality uh traumatic arrest i don't have anything more on that right now uh could be could be related to that we don't know full arrest when the patient came in. Are these injuries that are you see in a blast? Uh, yes, some shrapnel type injuries. We've seen some of those. Dr. Ransenderson also said that Grady's trauma unit was ready when this blast occurred this evening. Doctors began coming in. Trauma nurses came in. Everybody was ready. The system moved very, very smoothly. Everyone is being cared for. Two people in surgery. We still don't know the extent of their injuries. One confirmed dead. That person brought in under full arrest. 31 people here at Grady Hospital. The rest of the injured have been distributed at hospitals throughout Metro Atlanta. Karen? Okay, thank you very much, Denise. Let's go back over to Lee. Lee, you've been covering this since uh, the beginning. I want to talk a little bit about some of the preparedness things that were going on. Uh, quite often we did stories where there were mock disaster drills. Uh, tell us, do you think that helped prepare the city for what happened this evening? Yeah, they, as you know, the preparations here have uh, been very elaborate. They go back several years now in the planning stages. Uh, by the way, what you're seeing here is a, a live shot of the area where this device went off tonight, as you can see. Uh, very devoid of people. Uh, they had certainly all the gizmos in place. They have something like 30,000 security personnel 
uh, imported into this city, uh, be they National Guardsmen, be they uh, regular army, be they uh, from out of state. Uh, they have an awful lot of personnel here. Uh, they had a, uh, a security apparatus um, in place. Let me just expand on something you were asking me before. In terms of terrorist threats, they have had many, many bomb threats here um, during, these, uh, during these games. They have confirmed that for us at least uh, that much, but they have checked them all out and none of them have to this point come to anything. Uh, so uh, they do not obviously share with us uh, exactly what the nature of those threats are. They don't do that for a couple of reasons. They, they're not going to sort of go on uh, the record with a bomb threat unless they are reasonably assured that there is a threat to public safety. They have not had that assurance so far as we understand. They don't want to cause undue alarm uh, with these bomb threats, which some people, as you know, make uh, just for some kind of a sick joke. And they certainly don't want to be in the business of giving sort of wackos free publicity. So those are two very strong reasons for not going public with just any old threat that comes down the pipe. But uh, we don't know about this situation, whether there was any sort of telephone uh, threat involved. But we do know uh, that there was a suspicious package spotted prior to this. And it was during uh, the very early part of the investigation. They were telling some people to clear the area around that package when this device did go off, and we understand that some of the people that uh, were investigating that situation may be among the injured, Karen. Okay, thank you very much, Lee. Now, a hotline number has been set up by the American Red Cross for family members who want to check on family members. That number is 404-685-8285. Once again, this number is just for family members. So if you have someone you're concerned about, a family member, a relative, give a call to this number, 404 685 8285. We're going to check in right now with Denise Agent, who's over at Grady Hospital. Denise? Okay. Go. No. Stay. Yeah. Stay. In the park when the bomb blast happened, he went to see James Brown. Mike, tell me about it. Well, we had come out of the, the show from the House of Blues and went across to uh, see the Budweiser tent. And that was closed up, and as we were leaving, we stopped to watch the band. And uh, I was with my sister, showing her the big screen. Just heard a very, very loud noise. Um, we knew, I knew that uh, it, it wasn't normal. People started walking out, security started running in. Um, we left the park. There really wasn't anything I could do. Did you see anyone who was injured? I wasn't that close. Uh, but it, it was obvious that uh, the situation wasn't normal. Tell me about the noise again. Did you know at that point that it was a bomb, or did you think that something had fallen off the stage, perhaps? Uh, it, just something wasn't right. I, it, it, was, it was so loud that you knew it couldn't have been something pyrotechnic. Um, whether it, it wasn't clear to me, bomb or transformer or something, but just obviously something wasn't right. And you could also tell by the reaction of uh, ACOG personnel, and you could see various uh, police running towards the scene. And within seconds, sirens, you know, numbers of police came down, um, tech wood followed by fire trucks. It was, it was very obvious. Did you hear anything about a possible bomb threat before this happened or a package being put underneath we, the stage? We had been in the, I had been in the park for a matter of minutes. It, it was pure chance that I was there. There was no sense of anything from where I was. And I was fairly far away, I mean, relatively speaking, considering I was in the park. Being a journalist, you cover these kinds of things. But being right here in the middle and almost being a victim, what are your thoughts? It, it didn't. It, it didn't strike me at the time. I don't think it, it really does. It's very strange because I, I guess I knew that, that down in there, 150 feet or 200 feet from me, there was possible uh, serious injuries. And yet there we were away from it. And, and you could see a lot of people just not, not really uh, uh, paying that close attention to it. Um, they, the, many people didn't realize at that time the severity of what had happened. Thank you. That was Mike Epstein, a freelance journalist who works for us from time to time. He happened to be in the park watching the James Brown concert this evening when the bomb blast happened at Centennial Park. Karen? Okay, thank you very much, Denise. Now, John Roberts, CBS News reporter John Roberts, is uh, also near Lee at Centennial Park. And he spoke with a nurse who was on the scene, Elizabeth Holland. Uh, let's listen in on what she had to say. Elizabeth Holland, uh, you're wearing an AT&T shirt. Were you uh, working in some sort of official capacity with the Global Village? Yes, sir. Um, I have a small company, and we were providing first aid for AT&T. And we were underneath, our first aid station is located underneath the communication center. And it, I would say approximately 1 o'clock, I'm not quite sure. But cleaning up the room, and then all of a sudden we heard this very loud explosion. 
and um, I had a paramedic working with me, and he ran up the steps to where the um, um, stage area was, and ran up there, and evidently that's where you know the explosion had occurred. We should clarify that it, it appears the time was something around 20 minutes after one. Um, I'm not quite sure. This is why I'm saying it was. Doc, Dr. Hart, who I take it works with you, uh, responded to... Uh... No, sir, he was a visitor in the park. And through his generosity, he told the security guard that he was a physician, and they asked him to come in and help us, and we saw three people with minor injuries. And what, what did you see of the injuries? Uh, head laceration, two head lacerations and one neck maceration and uh, injury to the cheek. Did the people give you any kind of indication as to whether something hit them? Yes, sir. They said that something after it exploded then hit them, but they did not describe what it was. Did you see the area where this explosion took place? No, sir, I did not. But there wasn't any smoke or anything. We were, our room is in close proximity to the steps where you go up to evidently where this explosion was and there was no smoke or anything like that, you know. We seem to have established, at this point at least, that the explosion took place in or near the tower that provides the lights and is the, uh, the area where the soundboard is located right. for the uh, entertainment up there on, on the stage. Uh, the people who you treated with the lacerations, uh, were they coherent? Were they in oh, shock? Yes, How were they? They were frightened. You know, um, one gentleman had a very deep laceration on his forehead and he was very frightened. Um, we had one other young lady that um, had been cut on the head and it scared her very badly. How long did it take for the authorities to evacuate the area? Very short period of time. The EMS system was just superb. You know, the, um, when they first, they brought two people in to me and I told them to get on the telephone and call 911 you know, and initiate the ambulances, get them over there, and evidently several people had called. Elizabeth so, Holland, thanks for joining us. Thank we appreciate you, you coming up to our broadcast location. Thank you. Okay, and that was CBS News reporter John Roberts. Let's uh, check back in now with Lee Green, who is uh, overlooking Centennial Park. Lee? Well, John, we've been showing you some pictures so far uh, uh, very close in. Let's show you a wide look at your city tonight. You can see helicopters up in the sky. Um, with their searchlights on, uh, you can see the uh, you can see the brightly lit park still down in the front. It's kind of an odd, uh, ironic look tonight. Now that very festive uh, sort of look of the park uh, in the con in contrast with these helicopters flying over with their um, uh, with their searchlights and uh, and not quite sure what they're doing, but it all has a slightly uh, apocalyptic feel to it. I'd like to get uh, Shelley. Um, uh, Shelley Pape Lee to come in and join us again. She's been very kind, very patient with us. She was uh, down there, uh, John and Karen, in the park, I would guess, uh, from what you've been telling me, at about 50 yards away from this thing. I'm not very good with distance. But you were very, very close, uh, close enough to feel the force, some of the force of this thing, I think. Oh, most definitely. Um, I, it seemed like the ground actually shook. Like I said earlier, um, I don't know if it was nerves or more of the actual impact of it. Um, I felt like I went up 10 feet in the air just based on the rattledness. I was so scared. I didn't know what was going on. I just saw a big burst of light, smoke, and instantly people started running. And it was unbelievable. It was very scary. Nothing you've ever seen uh, like this before, I'm sure. No, there? and I hope I never have to see it again, obviously. What did you see in the moments afterwards? I gather you took off, did you? Uh, and um, everybody else. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, um, I was so, I don't, I guess it was because I was so scared, I stood still for a while. I didn't know what was going on, and I was trying to take a picture, actually, because I was close to the stage once and for all. I've been going to the concerts night after night trying to get close. And um, when it went off, I stood still. And when people started running, they were, like, bumping into me. And next thing you know, I thought, I'm going to run with them. Some sort of reggae band performing at the time. Everybody just there uh, that was there was just having a good time, right? Everyone was having a good time um, and dancing. Some people were just like uh, singing, singing along, kind of tuning along, um, I should say. And a lot of dancing going on. People, I know in your report, you're saying that um, they thought they were trying to clear people out. From my perspective, they didn't try clearing me out, and I wish they would have, but um, right. we had no warning. You're talking about the early warnings. Yeah, apparently right. those were very sort of localized just around the, uh, the area of the sound stage. Uh, what was people's reaction immediately afterwards? I, they, 
instantly panic. i think people who were even closer than i was um it was an instant panic people started running like i said there was a burst of light um orange in appearance smoke followed thereafter instantly people were running like i said i stood still and kind of in shock and um uh, because of everybody else's reaction, I ran too. Shelly, there have been some reports that people thought it was a pyrotechnic, thought it was part of the show. These are people generally that were a couple of blocks away. You were very close. Is there any doubt in your mind of what, what had happened? What did you think had happened immediately? Immediately, I thought it was a bomb. I mean, as soon as I came back here, um, my husband worked for one of the local TV stations. That's why I'm here. And um, I told him I thought it was a bomb. I never felt a bomb before, so it was all speculation, but instantly I said, it's a bomb because the earth actually moved. I mean, the ground was boom. So again, we've been hearing from some people who say that they thought it was uh, part of the show, that they thought it was maybe pyrotechnics, they thought it was something that the band was doing, they thought maybe a transformer had blown, some sort of electrical problem. You were never harbored uh, such an illusion. I, I thought it was a bomb. Um, when I cleared out of the park, as I was working my way out, I was walking. Um, I didn't want to rush. I didn't want to run into people like they had run into me. And authorities ran in and actually told myself and others that I was walking with, they said, don't walk, run. It was more of a panic. Um, but as we were walking, we were discussing, what do you think it was? I was saying, I thought it was a bomb. What do you think? And a lot of people actually thought it was some sort of firework um, exhibit. And I was like, I didn't think it was a firework because nothing shot in the air other than a burst of light and smoke. So there was no kidding around at the time. They no. were telling people to get out of there and get out as fast as they could. Yes, basically. yes. They were actually, I think they were um, alarming people more than, I don't want to say that more than what need be, but it didn't help matters because then that left everyone in a panic-stricken state. I suppose they didn't know what was coming up next is, uh, is part of the thing, and we're certainly seeing a lot of that tension uh, here tonight. Shelley, thanks very much. We'll be coming back to you uh, periodically through the evening. Shelley, uh, uh, an eyewitness to all of this, uh, a very brave young lady, as you're just hearing there, uh, no more than 50 yards away from this explosion. She saw a uh, bright orange light in connection with this, and as you've just heard, uh, there was never any doubt in her mind at her close proximity as to what had uh, happened. She thought it was a bomb from the get-go, and uh, that is certainly uh, appears to be what it was. We're getting uh, confirmation from the FBI that there was some sort of a device uh, on the sound stage, very near to the AT&T uh, stage where these performers uh, were at the time uh, that this thing uh, happened, and that they had, in fact, some warning of this in the sense that somebody had alerted them to the fact that there was a package there and that they were trying to sort of get to the bottom of what it was. Uh, they were alarmed enough that they had taken some of the people uh, away from around that uh, thing when it went off. And uh, and, and the rest, as you, as you know, there were many, many injuries and uh, apparently some deaths as a result of that explosion. Thank you, Lee. We'll check back with you in a few minutes. Uh, ACOG is expected to have a briefing. It's been scheduled to begin uh, momentarily uh, to give us the latest information that they can give us, and uh, we will bring uh, that information to you as soon as we can. You have a phone number for relatives. I understand that you might want to find out about friends, but this is just for families. If you're concerned about someone who might have been out at the park, this morning, please give a call to 404-685-8285. It's a Red Cross hotline that's been set up just for family members. Once again, recapping for you what we know so far, a bomb went off in Centennial Park about 1.15 this morning. The bomb apparently went off in a tower adjacent to a concert that was going on. There were thousands of people in the area. We have, I believe, a confirmation of one fatality and reports that as many as four people have been killed. That is not confirmed. Uh, dozens of people are at area hospitals, as many as 200. Most of them have minor injuries uh, and have been released. Some are in surgery. Uh, some are being uh, cared for and admitted at the hospital. Uh, we are waiting, of course, as the, as the hours go by this morning. We'll get more information on the condition of those people also as we wait to, for more information about what happened and what has been a chaotic scene downtown all it morning. It definitely has. And for those of you who have just joined us this morning, Bob Brennan of ACOG has said the games will go on today. So uh, if you were concerned and wondering just what was going to happen, Bob Brennan says the games will continue this morning. Uh, with us right now is Tanya Dunham, who was out of Centennial Olympic Park last night at the concert. Oh, when everything just kind of broke loose, Tanya had a, a home video camera and took some pictures. Give us, again, give us again an idea of just what was happening. Okay. Well, actually, right here on this video, um, it's behind the the AT and T little stage they had, and I just everybody was running. I was just trying to run and. And, and get out of the way before something else happened. And this is actually when everybody was, all the ambulance and the fire trucks and police officers were trying to get everybody out of the way and they were going straight to the scene, which was right up the street. 
We have heard reports that uh, bomb removal squads have been called to other areas of downtown, found perhaps two other devices. I'm not sure just what is going on with that. We hope to hear more once uh, the briefing gets underway. Tanya, what, what's the feeling, though, for you right now, knowing that you were in the middle of something that was just so chaotic and could have been uh, fatal? Yeah, I'm blessed. Actually, I'm really blessed because um, if I wouldn't taken away from the concert just at that moment, I would have been right there in the heat of it, too, because I was that close. I was that close. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We uh, have uh, information now, some videotape from uh, a German television. It was an interview with the swimmer, Janet Evans, and the interview was being conducted uh, in the area of Centennial Park at the time, uh, around the time, that the bomb exploded. So let's take a look. Right. What? Get out there. Get out there. And now, more than two decades later, a movie is coming out by director Clint Eastwood about Richard Jewell, the man. It chronicles his experiences leading up to the Centennial Park bombing and how the FBI and media accused him of being the bomber days after it happened. If you go to see the movie, we want to know what you think about it. And let us know what you were doing July 27, 1996. From the archives, Karen Greer, CBS 46 News.